Hello everyone, welcome aboard the Nitty Stew podcast. My name is Leanne and I am the Nitty Stew. And I actually recently found out that not everyone knows where my name comes from or what that means. Stew is short for stewardess, which is a old fashioned name that's gone the way of the dodo bird, referring to flight attendants, or as we also re refer to ourselves now, cabin crew members. So welcome to the Nitty Stew. I am a Canadian flight attendant and my other full-time job is eating, sleeping, breathing, all things knitting and yarn. And here on this channel, I like to combine both of those passions and share footage of those things with you. So welcome. Welcome to everyone here. If you're new, thank you for checking me out. And for those of you who are hanging in with me and have been here since the beginning, I feel like we're friends and I love the engagement uh, in the comments and the inspiration. And it's, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. I, I think I might have mentioned this in the last video, but I find that creating this channel and doing these videos has really given a fire in my belly to get out there and explore these beautiful Canadian cities that I get to go to. And I really appreciate that. It's, uh, it's not something I take for granted. However, I wouldn't have pushed myself to do what I have done in this last uh, several weeks since I started this channel. So I thank you all for that inspiration. Um, today I am coming at you live from my air conditioned hotel room here in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Also the traditional territory of the Mi'kmaq or also accepted pronunciation according to YouTube is Mi'kmaq. And I wanted to thank Anna from the Yukon for suggesting that I let everyone know and acknowledge the traditional territories that I'm filming in and the cities that I'm going to across Canada. That's really important to me. And I, I just know that as a nation, we have a long way to go to healing our native and indigenous communities with, um, yeah, there's, there's some heavy stuff out there. And I think it begins with each and every one of us. So thank you to Anna for that suggestion. And yeah, welcome. And I am, I'm proud to be here today in downtown Halifax. It is gorgeous. We've got 23 degrees out there. Uh, it's 73 degrees Fahrenheit for my American friends. And this is the third time I've been to Halifax in the last little while. In fact, I was scheduled to fly five trips out here to Halifax. I think four of those five were red eyes. <laughs> help, help me. Um, I actually am doing pretty good, honestly. I, yeah, red eyes and I aren't best friends. Last night we headed out and we were on time, which was great. So that means we were wheels up at 10.45 p.m. Calgary, Alberta time. And we landed at 6.13 a.m. Halifax time, which is three hours ahead of Calgary time. Had a quick uh, red eye nap and got up and got out today. I have been going out quite a bit, but oh my goodness, it was hot out there. So I am inviting you to sit back, relax, fasten your seatbelts because I got a lot of eye candy today. Yeah, we're cracking into not my Bengal spice tea. Today it's Montelier carbonated natural spring water, ice cold, lime flavored. Ah. Yep, worked up a sweat walking around Halifax's hilly and um, not as hilly as Newfoundland, but it's it's got some Got some grades, got my steps in. Um, please feel free to grab a refreshing beverage of your choice, whatever that might be. And hopefully you'll sit and knit with me as well on our episode today. I got a lot on the, on the uh, agenda. Just gonna chit chat with y'all and show you what I got on the needles. But today's episode, I have three FOs to share. It's been three weeks since my last podcast. So I'd say that's pretty good. Although one of them was almost finished before I, but that's okay. It counts. Three FOs, one whip on the needles, and I've got three things on the Nitty Stew queue. 
and then I have a few acquisitions at the very end. For anyone who wants to stick around and interspersed among this, I will have some footage from the last three times I've been here in Halifax. So I hope you enjoy. Uh, okay, like let's let's talk about the first order of business. The hand dyed skein of yarn for my thousand subscriber giveaway. <laughs> Thanks to the internets and the YouTubes, I found some lovely free software and I was able to plug in the URL and it did a random comment picker. And I wanna say a big congratulations to Rebecca Bladorn of, hopefully I said that right, of Maryville, Tennessee. Rebecca has won my hand-eyed uh, Bow River inspired fingering extra fine organic merino and 25% silk hand dyed by the Nitty Stew. Thank you to everybody who commented and your uh, messages are, I read each and every one and I try and reply to each and every one. I don't know if that's going to be sustainable, but I really enjoy that. It's, it's so fun. This community is really fun. And yeah, so Rebecca, I just need you to send me an email at the, um, I'm going to put it in the, in the, just, where should I put it? I'll put it in the video here. It's fourwilkies at gmail.com if anyone wants to reach out to me. But you can find me, of course, on Instagram, Ravelry, and in the comments. So thank you for all the nice things everyone said and for being here and helping this channel grow. It grew another 900 since the last, 900 friends on board since the last, uh, since we celebrated a thousand. So I'm blown away by it. I just absolutely love it. It does feel very intimate, you know, no matter how many people are here, I think we have these common things and I've made some new fiber friends and perhaps we'll do another giveaway in the future. Um, I like giving things away. Uh, in fact, up until recently, I basically give away most of my knitting. <laughs> but I'm keeping some of the stuff I'm making now. Um, yeah, I need a second because I can't wait to start talking about the finished object I'm wearing. I hope this sounds okay. Sorry, the background's not great. I. I'm in an older hotel, so the hotel is right downtown, and there's there's no real pretty background. And so I wanted to be near the light, because the room is a little bit dark as well. And there's, yeah, it is what it is. Most importantly, I hope the sound is okay, and the quality of the sound is okay. All right. Well, boom. We have... A foggy city ranunculus um, going on here. Now, okay, if you've been following, you know that the yarn itself that I made this with is very special to me. This is Foggy City, a colorway by a independent dyer in St. John's, Newfoundland, my favorite overnight in all of Canada. And I bought a skein of this in my overnight in St. John's and the story goes, I tried making um, the awesome ribbed hat pattern called Straya Hat by Andrea Maori and three times I botched that and I'd already made the hat one time. So I was like, okay, okay, bossy yarn, what do you want to be? So I held it up to my ears. I was like, what's that? You want to be a ranunculus? Okay. So instead of taking out my third botched attempt, I kept it on the needles. And for the neckline, this was supposed to be, yeah, this was supposed to be a Straya hat brim. And I kept going. And I just um, switched out because the the needle size for the Straya hat is 2 US which is 2.75 mm as well and uh, I switched up after the neck part and I went on to a US 9 for the remainder of the yoke section which is a five and a half millimeter 
And I just joined up with the patterns numbers as I went. And it went pretty great. Um, and by the, the last episode, like I had gotten pretty far, I think I was around there and I kept going and I was like, you know what? I think I need to make a long sleeve version, but I'd only bought one skein of the Foggy City from the wonderful windswept fibers. fibers. So I went back on the website, Cast On, Cast Off, which is the yarn shop I bought it at, and there wasn't any left. So I emailed her, long story short, she reached out to Pam from Windswept Fibers, and Pam's like, I'll just, just dye some up for you. I mean, not maybe for me, but it was like time for another run maybe. And I said, okay, so that's what I did. I was like, okay, I'll hold off and I'll, and I'll, I'll leave it, leave the stitches on the stitch marker and wait for the new yarn to come. Well, lo and behold, she sends me the skein that, that also, and then put in a second skein. And she's like, you know, I was just concerned that it might not match perfectly, which I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't see a different dye lot in there. She nailed it. So she she sent a second one just because she said she was concerned that it wouldn't match. I love it. And yeah, I changed up the sleeves. Obviously the pattern has like, I think those gathered sleeves. I used the same stitches that were called for to be on hold, which um, yeah, I didn't change that up. But I used a US 8 five millimeter circular and started working my way down. And I just kept decreasing by two stitches, like about every four, every four inches. Cause I wanted, I don't know, I just wanted this close, close feel, you know, like a, <laughs> cause I didn't make socks with this sock yarn. And I was like, I wanted to pop that close to my skin. And I stopped at about three quarter length and I used Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. The air conditioning just popped in. I hope it's not too loud. Oh, okay, yeah, I'm glad I stopped. That was pretty loud in the background and uh, I didn't want that to be too distracting. I was talking about using Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off for the, the cuffs and I used, um, these tiny little circulars, which I actually also used. I have these little wooden ones. This is a US 8, a five millimeter little nine inch circular. And I used that once after I got the larger stitch mount, then I went down and I kept decreasing. I'll put detailed notes in my Ravelry page and I'll link that below in the description if you wanted to go look and see what I did. I'm pretty proud. Um, I did like the video of the Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off, which was demonstrated by Down Cellar Studios on YouTube. When I blocked it, I was so pleased to see how the body had just grown just enough because it was kind of short. I do like the crop thing, and but it was just like a little bit, like it was about an inch too high. And when I wet blocked it, laid it out to dry. Um, the sleeves didn't grow too, too long, which is good because that kind of might have looked funny, but yeah, overall, I'm just, this is just like got a lot of happy feels. And even my daughter, I wore it yesterday and she's like, wow, mom, that's very intricate. And it's a ranunculus. It's ranunculus how much I love this ranunculus. So Ranunculus number two, will there be a three, four? How many of you guys made? I think someone had commented that they had made seven in one of the comments when I first got on the Ranunculus train. But I'm gonna get off the Ranunculus train. I um, have learned that I am a rumba knitter. Slow knit, quick, quick. Slow, quick, quick. So yeah, my next project once I cast this off um, I've been working on something for my daughter which I alluded to in the last video the amazing frog pattern by Claire Garland also known as dot pebbles 
pleased to introduce you to Hector. Well, I'm calling him Hector. This is the froggy I made for my daughter's 21st birthday. I'd sent her some links through Instagram of like these super adorable reels that are put out by India Rose Crawford. And it's like this frog hanging out with its friend. Uh oh, there's the air conditioning again. Ah! You know it's summer in Canada. When? Um, so yeah, back to a little froggo here. So yeah, those Instagram reels just made me like need to make this little dude. And he turned out pretty good. I don't know if I did the greatest job with seaming, but I, I mean, let's not point out the mistakes in our work, shall we? Like, let's just, <laughs> let's just appreciate this little cutie. <laughs> My daughter liked it. Um, she asked, she's like, oh, it's not green. And I was like, no, it is not. It is kind of, uh, it's kind of a brownie yellow color. And I used some eyes that I had and I glued them on. I used this um, Alina, I think that's what it's called. Did I write the notes in there? To glue on the eyes. I'll put a picture of it because I use it for, I make quite a few toys. If you check on my Ravelry and that glue, it does, it sticks to knit fabric and it stays and it dries clear for the most part. I did get a little bit goopy. I don't know if that's focusing, but yeah, you can see there's a little goop on his eyes there, but he is still loved. And I'll tell you, the pattern itself, brilliant, super easy. And the, the result is just adorable. I, I went down to a US um, 3, 3.25 mm double pointed needle. And the pattern actually calls for one size up from that. And I, I just went out and did that. But at the end of the day, I think I probably should have stuck with her recommendation because I'm making a second one with the right needle size. And is it ever cute? If I do say so myself, come on. All right, so this is Frago number two. <laughs> Ribbit, Ribbit. Hey, and this one's with the green. Um, I actually did have this green in my stash. Hmm. This is Garn Studio Kid Silk. Yeah, no, no, it's not. What is this? Hmm. I'll put it here. But yeah, this green has got little bits of yellow in it. And I would like to get the same, it's, it is drops, um, for the belly. And then you hold a little bit of mohair with it. With the, I got the, um, this brown color. And I held these two together. And here we are. Now these eyes that I'm using are... I, I ordered some inexpensive ones on Amazon. And you get what you pay for. Like, I've been ordering my toy eyes from the same person for many years. Great maker on Etsy called 6060. 6060 Eyes. And she's awesome. And so I decided, you know what, I think I might be making more of these frogs. <laughs> a chorus of frogs. They're actually called an army. I think, or a colony. I did look up, what do you call groups of frogs? And I, I like a chorus, that, that makes sense. So if I do, I need to have safety eyes. And I got them from my girl, 6060. Look at those ones. So these are the ones I used on Frogo number two. And they have metal pushbacks. And I also ordered, while I was getting them, I ordered some nine millimeter eyes from her which are, sorry for the crinkling, and these ones were 12, which is what Clara Garland recommends in the pattern is 12 millimeter. So, yeah, actually, perhaps I'll stop here and insert some footage from, from a couple of my visits here to Halifax, just to break up the knitting content a little bit. Uh, my first trip out here of the summer was in June, June 10th. And what I did was I walked down to a a famous part of Halifax called the Hydrostone, um, Hydrostone Park. Yeah, and it's also where LK Yarns is located. 
as luck would have it. So Hydrostone Park is, it was voted one of the top 10 neighborhoods in Canada. But LK Yarns does not disappoint. She has a delightful selection of so many different types of yarns. Of course, she's got the Briggs and Little and uh, the Handmaiden Fleece Artist, which is the local, one of the local dye studios out here. So I walked back, my, my hurt toe, it's been six weeks now, so it's much, much better, but back in June there, it was still hurting and it was not very happy with me. Then my second trip, there was something magical going on. I was in search actually of some seafood chowder and the shuttle driver, and these guys know everything. These are locals, right? He's like, I recommend the old triangle. So I was like, okay, I'm on my way. My crew didn't want to come. So I just went for a little wander, even though it was raining and drizzling, but it was just so warm. It was like 15 degrees Celsius and the city was quiet. It was awesome. So yeah, I walked up to the old triangle. There was a bit of a wait to get in because it's a popular pub and the food, oh my gosh. So I demolished a delicious seafood chowder, which had every seafood I think ever, and then a non-alcoholic Erdinger beer and some soda bread. It was so cozy and wonderful. The live music was about to start, but you know, I thought ah, I should probably head back to the hotel. And before I did, I went for a wander down the pier. It was cr incredible. In fact, I wrote a poem and I'm certainly not a poet, but it inspired me like to no end. It was just, yeah, it was a special time. The rain sprinkles on my cheeks like kisses. It warmly washes my vision and I see everything clearer, vivid. Instead of splashing and amplified sounds of puddles and cars and tires, there's a hush upon the city, like a thick velvet curtain, the kind that you would peek behind on a stage in a school. And it's been drawn back to reveal the lights, which are like mirrors on the pavement, red and gold, revealing the evening's beauty, welcoming me to walk on these muted pavement steps. Is this a dream? Where is the wind? I'm held safely with a full heart in this beautiful city. Yeah, so that was a really cool night. I feel it was similar to how St. John's just grabbed a hold and like made me feel so loved. There's something about Atlanta Canada, I'll tell you, the East Coast. It's got, it's got magic in the air, and especially in the summertime. It's pretty awesome. So I wish I would have had my next FO, actually, that night. It would have been appropriate. I, instead, I wore my crew jacket, which is pretty, we call it pretty emo. It's like this black trench coat. So I wore that around, and it kept me dry, but I could have used my Bonnie Isle hat. Yeah, I finished it up. A slow, quick, quick. Um, well, Fair Isle, right? It's so addictive. You just can't. It's like I need to do one more row, one more row. This pattern is from the Shetland Wool Week. And it was chosen, the patron was chosen. And it was uh, Linda Shearer. I talked about this in my last episode. And when I went out to Ottawa, I popped over to Wabi Sabi and got some... Uh, Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight. Just need to smell that. Um, so I did have the fingering weight yarns, which it required one, two, three, four, five, six colors. Um, the orange is FC7 mix. Then you got your blue green, which is this kind of sagey color there. That one is Jameson and Smith, and it is FC62 mix. And then the brown and the white, or the cream and the brown, those are Rama Fennel, and I got those from Hand Knit Yarn Store in Hamilton. Whoops, kicked the camera there. 
And then in my stash, I used stash. I had some Bar Bar Ram U Pip color work. And this hat was supposed to fit me, my 21 and a half inch head. And turns out it's more of a tam on me because I, I didn't have the recommended needle size for, for the size medium. And all I had was a US 2, 2.75, which I, which I used for the brim, the corrugated brim, and then a US 3 for the body, which is a 3.25 mm. And I have since ordered the right size so that I can get a more of a beanie, more of a toque fitted, fitted size. And it was a lesson in the different, I mean, how different fingering weights can be. Like my Bar Ram U was extremely light fingering. And when I was trying to pair it with the Finnell, which actually I notice now is actually sport weight. So, yeah, it was quite a bit thicker, but yeah, at the end, I really like it. I, I this pattern was so fun. Um, I especially like, I especially like the swirls, these here. Uh, I think, well, they're waves, right? And then the anchors, I just learned that that's supposed to be like, they're below water. The bottom of the anchor is below water. So this might be better for somebody whose head is around 22 and a half inches. I would like to make it again. I would like to go back to Wabi Sabi and just buy all Jameson and Smith. It's not very expensive yarn. Uh, that wool itself, it's just, it's obviously made for color work. And I have a lot of other patterns in that Shetland Wool Week annual that I bought myself for my birthday. So that's gonna go on the list of a wish list, but do I always need to be buying new stuff? No, I'm actually really grateful that I used my stash for that. Um, one tip, and maybe you know this, maybe you don't. I, I learned this, uh, I want to say in like 20, 2013, 2014 from another instructor at Stash Lounge where I taught the hat class for many years. And this was a game changer for me. <laughs> Separating each repeat of a pattern, color work, or if it's like lace work or cables with a separate stitch marker is just enables you to, to follow the chart. And if you make an error, you only have to go back that certain amount of that stitch repeat. So what I ended up doing was I used one beginning of round marker, which was a, a green one. And then I used 12 purple stitch markers for the stitch repeats. Um, Oh, this was also very interesting, and I posted it in the forum about this hat. There's a forum on Facebook, the Bonnie Isle Hat Knit Along group, or what have you. It, um, I was like, the chart goes from 12 stitches all of a sudden to 13 stitches. Am I supposed to just like decrease or increase and just continue on, or what is this? And apparently there's this magical thing. <laughs> with the recommended, it's, this is a free pattern by the way, so I can tell you the numbers, but when you get increased for the body, it goes up to 156 stitches, which goes into 12 and 13. So the pattern, I did not have to increase, which I did do, um, but yeah, I would have had to move my stitch markers back and forth. So I just thought that was really cool. Math can be cool when it comes to knitting. Otherwise, yeah, so that was my third FO. Um, I hope you guys are finding joy in whatever you're knitting. So I'm doing another quick, quick. This is my whip. So what I've got on the needles right now is my 10th. <laughs> no joke. This is my 10th on the C train hat. Now on the C train hat is it is a fail safe for me and I've made well obviously nine before and what I what I really really appreciate about this pattern is it calls for wool folk now this is wool folk 
um, far. And I picked it up when I went on a little excursion with a new fiber friend, Tracy Chelsea. Her Instagram name is Oliver Rain Studios. She makes mini furniture and really cool stuff. Uh, and we went to check out Calgary's newest and cutest yarn shop called Little Bow Fiber Co. Super sweet. It's in a really funky area of town called Marta Loop. And tucked away, it's like a little French market back there. It's so cute. And she had a ton of gorgeous stuff that I was like squishing and could not resist. And I found this colorway of Wolf Folk Far. It's called Light Apricot. It's kind of a peachy pink. A little bit outside my normal palette, but I love it. Also, while I was there, I got these earrings, which are they're kind of a statement piece. But I was wearing, uh, I was actually wearing this, this same dress, and I was like, I think this matches my outfit. So the, it's the owner, she's talented, and she had an Etsy shop, so before she had her yarn shop, and she has these in her store. Yeah, I like them. They're kind of stampede -y. And it is Stampede back home in Calgary right now. Calgary Stampede is the greatest outdoor show on earth. Bring your wallet. <laughs> it's very expensive, but it can be tons of fun depending on what you do. We haven't gone since our kids were smaller because we'd take them to the rodeo and go on some of the rides and eat our way through the midway, which was like all the unhealthy stuff. I still remember my favorite was deep fried Oreo. I mean, it was so good. So no plans uh, to go this year, I don't think, but the plans we do have are, we're gonna go kayaking down the bow again. I just started kayaking last year and I got my own kayak this year. So we're gonna do that next week. One day, we're doing it, rain or shine. Dave and I are like, that's it. He's, um, he's working for as a letter carrier and is very, very physically demanding. And sometimes on days off, we're just like, I got nothing, what do you wanna do? Order Walmart groceries online and <laughs> maybe watch our phones, I'll knit. Um, yeah, what are your favorite summer activities other than knitting? Let me know. We did go on a movie date and went to see a must-see, Top Gun. Oh my gosh, it is so good. I got fired right up watching this show. It is like a nail biter. Although you know Tom's gonna make everything okay, right? He's gonna, he's gonna do fine. Yeah, there's some like heart-tugging moments and he is such a good actor. Like you can feel his torment and his pain. And the, you know, the plot twist is that it's Goose's son who's in his elite group that Tom's been called to train on an impossible mission. Another good Tom series, Mission Impossible. I, I like Tom Cruise. I have, I've always liked him. Even when everyone thought he was a weirdo, I was like, I still like Tom Cruise. Val Kilmer's in it too. Um, yeah, it's, it's very, very well done. Good, good action. Good excitement. And if you're not singing Danger Zone by the time you're leaving. I should have been a fighter pilot. Nah. I'll just be a flight attendant. And I like that too. Tracy and I had a nice time. We went and had coffee, chitty chatted, hung out, and there's going to be like a knit group. Marta Loop makers I think it's called I'm in it on Instagram but I am flying the next time there actually it's the first time everyone's getting together and I won't be able to go but I'll try and I'll try and get my schedule to work so that I can get out and knit with some people in real life a knit group this YouTube thing is wonderful for virtual virtual connections but Sometimes it's uh, it's nice to hang out with your friends, especially if you can just like chitty chat and 
I think I said chitty chat a lot just just now. <laughs> I can feel the red eye fatigue in. <laughs> I better keep moving. I better stick to my to my agenda or this is going to be a really long video. And I hope y'all don't mind that. Okay. So I showed you my FOs. Um, yeah, I'd like to show you my Snitty Stew Q. I've got three things uh, in the imminent future. First of all, I mean, it's got to be there, right? Froggy sweater. Come on. <laughs> and I have friends who are actually, I have one friend in, partic in particular, YYC Knits, who she's like, you've got to make this sweater. It's like, I do. I've got to make this sweater. I still have to finish the green frog, and then I will make the sweater. He still needs his arms and legs, so no point in having a sweater if you don't have arms of the froggy to put in it, right? So that's next up, and that's just like bits and bobs of finger and weight drops. So that's next. I am looking forward to talking about this. So this pattern is called Timotic, and it's a delightful bulky weight textured toque designed by Shannon Cook. Shannon Cook. I almost said kook, which rhymes with toque. I've had this in my queue a long time, and then I was inspired by watching a YouTube channel called Wool and Twine Stu Fiber Studios with an awesome German girl. Her name is Yule, I believe, and I just can't get enough of her. She is adorable, and her, she's super gifted. She had a shop update. So this is on my queue, and I did purchase this yarn or wool cannot wait to show you okay it arrived in the mail very quickly it's unspun yarn i'm fiber curious about this i've been seeing some designs bee mandarins and ozetta making things out of unspun wool but the thing about Wool and Twine is that she makes everything ethically sourced, minimally processed, even her packaging, everything she does, she does it so mindfully. And this is from a local farmer that she worked with and they created this gorgeous uh, cake, oh, plate. There's different types, more commercial types, but I, I can't even, that smell, the, yeah, that is just so good, so good. So I ordered that, and I'm going to use the video that she recently put out as well, Wool and Twine Fiber Studio. She put out a video on how to work with this, and tips and tricks, and it's not easy because if it's not been spun, right? So one other time I had purchased and I still have this in my stash actually, a sweater quantity of custom woolen mills unspun to make a couch and inspired sweater. And I had no idea how to use it. So the very first time I went to cast on and it just instantly breaks, I was like, mm, nope. Uh, but now, now that I know, you essentially as a beginner would knit from the inside and the outside at the same time. So two strands or you hold mohair with it. So it gives it tons of strength that way, or not, maybe not tons of strength, but it strengthens it and it's light as air. I'm really looking forward to it. It's, um, yeah, it's coming up soon. Uh, so I think that's another quick, quick. So see, again, here we're gonna go into something a little slower. This is the Karuna shawl. Now I was inspired, look at this, how beautiful is this? I believe she is a Finnish designer. Um, her name is Rania Hakaleto. And I was inspired to buy this pattern, to find some wool for it by the awesome Mother Daughter podcast called Knit My Way Home. Oh my gosh, it's filmed in Yukon. And it's Loretta and her sweet, smart, super cool daughter Natalia and it's just such a lovely podcast and I went back and started 
watching them and they had they had this as a knit along in spring of 2021. The only thing I regret about a YouTube channel is that I didn't start it sooner because I missed out on some of these awesome people who have come into my life. And yeah, she she made this with, I believe, Hillisfog, Loretta, the mom from the podcast. And it calls for 887 yards of fingering weight, which believe it or not, I do not have in my stash. Uh, but looking at the gauge, and what I do have and brought with me is, guess, breaks a little, baby. I have two skeins of breaks a little sport in this, like, evergreen colorway. Dark green, it's called. Yeah. And there's 430 yards per. So I wouldn't need to use, like, a fingering weight and hold mohair with it. I haven't really jumped on that train yet. And I think that's just because I'm a little bit held back by the priciness of mohair. And also, I don't know if it's going to itch me. Whereas I know that the Briggs and I, we're, we're friends. So that's, that's number three. That's my slower knit. I might need one more ball. I don't know. Depends how big I go for it. I just need garter stitch in my life. I do. It's got the little lace pattern at the bottom. So I love that beautiful texture. And then just garter stitch. Garter stitch for the win. And that's what's coming up next. So I'll start working on those. I think what I'll do is um, grab my knitting and finish this video with footage from my, my outing today. So today was by far the warmest day I've been here. And so I cruised out and about decided to go up to the very famous Citadel Hill and uh, I didn't go into the Citadel so it's $12.50 and I well I'm not cheap I will do these things I thought you know maybe not today so I just went up a walk to the top got a nice look around so Halifax Nova Scotia Nova Scotia is Latin for New Scotland the population of this city, as counted in 2021, is 415,000, and the median age here is 39. There are six degree-granting universities in Halifax, which could also account for the fact that Halifax has the most pubs per capita than any city in Calgary, or any city in Canada. In the back of my mind, I'm like, Calgary has a lot of pubs too. But per capita, Halifax wins. Fun fact, downtown Halifax is home to one of the world's longest downtown boardwalk waterfronts. And it is so awesome. And it certainly wasn't quiet and deserted like it was when I was here on uh, earlier in June there, that beautiful evening. It was busy and bustling and people were having a great time. It was just gorgeous course I had to pop in and see the local yarn shop that is right downtown and that is called The Loop. The Loop is owned by a lovely lady named Mimi and her little shop has so many goodies. It's got a wall of macrame, it's got some embroidery and she has some gorgeous mohair that I was like in my color but I put it down. Just a great store, very friendly, just really cute. So that was really fun. On my way back to the hotel, I had seen this previously, but it was never open because it was at night. The Province House, Nova Scotia, case where they had the mace. I thought that was super cool. The Legislative Chamber. Look how cool that is. So this particular building is so neat. It's um, in 1811, a sum of two, 20,000 British pounds was allocated for the building of this province house. But the actual cost of construction was 52,000 British pounds. There's like, initially, it says province house was initially heated with 38 fireplaces and stoves. 
seven fireplaces remain today, showcasing, showcasing original stucco detail and the mantelpieces. I just love the ceilings and these large paintings. Like, when do you see that? It's so interesting. I really enjoyed it. My favorite room was the uh, library. Province House, here we go. Province House is Canada's oldest seat of government. The Nova Scotia House of Assembly has met in this building every year since February 1819. Yeah, and so that was my day, and that's my trips out to Halifax. Um, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. It's been great chatting. It's been great collecting footage. Um, this city is spectacular. Okay, I'm only going to show the acquisitions, two little acquisitions, um, and then I'm going to wrap up this video. I had an altercation with somebody altercation so we we don't see things eye to eye and we had a phone conversation that didn't go well and I was in an emotional state and I was in Walmart crying and an email came in from artistic yarns by Abby and I needed some yarn therapy so that's the truth behind it but what I ordered was a kit for fingerless Pac-Man mitts but wait here's a kicker and I've been watching this for a while I've subscribed to the newsletter which is why I got the email uh, artistic yarn by Abby does self patterning so this ball of magic <laughs> makes these guys the ghosts automatically you just have to knit to gauge and watch her tutorials she's got a tutorial on our website and these guys are going to appear by just knitting what and how fun was this i wasn't expecting these two little minis look at that and she also threw in a cherry stitch marker so these are hand painted like that would be i can't even imagine the skills it would take to make all of these ghosts line up. So that was a emotional purchase, but I don't regret it. So kind of a splurge, but who doesn't need Pac-Man ghost fingerless gloves? I know somebody does. My husband's like, well, you should get that in sock, sock um, quantity. I was like, I should, but it would have been substantially more for the sock one. So I just got the little fingerless gloves. I ordered something from wool and twine some of her naturally dyed dk bfl masham oops look at this color it's a little bit washed out in this light but if i bring it back it's like different shades of green light and dark it's called artichoke 75 percent blue fates lester and 25 percent mid brown masham ethically dyed naturally dyed by the one and only wool and twine eek so here we are this is dk and it's 240 meters what should i do with 240 meters not sure let me know in the comments below okay guys well i don't know how long this video was it felt like it might be pretty long but i did have to stop and go thanks to the air conditioning a few times and a little bit spacey from the red eyes and just having a, a nap instead of like a full night's rest before I make these podcasts. It's kind of when I rewatch it, it's like, oh, it's like I'm watching it for the first time too. <laughs> oh my goodness. Thanks. Thanks for being so awesome, everybody. And I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful summer or winter if you're in the other hemisphere. And stay safe, be happy, and I'll see you guys in a few weeks. Bye.